Hello. My name is Marina Glogovac, and with my team at CanadaHelps.org, I spend a lot of time thinking about how technology, philanthropy, and impact compete and combine. As we all know, there has been a real huge technology-propelled upheaval across the board in the last couple of decades, and philanthropy, just like the media, travel, retail, publishing, and music sectors, continues to be affected and transformed by the fast proliferation and widespread adoption of digital, mobile, and social technologies. We definitely live in an era of disruptive innovations and creative destruction. Entire industries have been wiped out, weakened, and in many cases replaced by the whole new ones that simply did not exist before. And it's worth pointing out that most, actually all of this disruption has come from outside of the established systems. On a deeper level, the disruption that we're all witnessing is not just about new products or new ways of doing things. It's about a fundamental rewriting of the rules of engagement, the rules of business. Who can do what? Who can compete with whom? And under what circumstances? All sorts of lines and boundaries have blurred. These changes have been driven by many different factors, but a few, but a few key ones are massive demographic shifts with a whole generation that has only known the internet taking a center stage, an exponential increase in consumer power where consumer preferences and expectations for how they want their experiences are driving the change regardless of whether affected parties like it or not. The proliferation and, and ubiquity of connective devices and increased volumes and availability of data. These driving forces have created some general trends. We've seen the democratization of content generation and more importantly, authority. Everyone is a publisher today and I can hear the collective journalistic cringing in the room. Uh, social networks and their culture of compulsive sharing are powerhouses of unprecedented scale and reach. But one of the most fascinating phenomena to come out of all these changes is what we have come to call person to person. It signifies a wholesale restructuring of power and influence in the public sphere. Research now confirms that we today trust friends and each other more than we trust any traditional authority or institution. It has spun social networks, peer-to-peer -peer selling, lending, payments, uh, blockchain certainly can be viewed as a peer-to-peer -peer enabled technology, and user uh, reviews and recommendations, and relevant to charities, uh, the absolutely meteoric rise of personal philanthropy crowdfunding, which you know in 2015 was over $15 billion market in North America alone. The new peer-to-peer technology-driven capabilities serve to enable the long tail of sellers and buyers, givers and receivers, peers. The influence between peers is the new currency of our times. Finally, we live in an increasingly data-driven environment. Massive amounts of real-time data are being uploaded with mobile devices, sensors and wearable technology. In the words of respected internet commentator Mary Meeker, Mining, the rising volume of data, has the potential to yield patterns that help solve previously unsolvable problems. Now, how has all this impacted charities? There has been a blurring of lines between profit and nonprofit, with a growing popularity of social entrepreneurship, the emergence of new concepts such as social finance and impact investments, now accelerated through technology, the embrace of the triple bottom line by millennials, new legal entities like B Corps and Triple C Corps, and the changing role of corporate philanthropy. This combined with a data-obsessed world in which dashboards are definitely in the zeitgeist has created uh, an urgent need for defining and measuring impact of the charitable world. And really, charitable work, sorry, and really the whole new level of, of kind of pressure and expectations for charities. I welcome the desire to capture and communicate impact because the almost exclusive focus on the so-called admin ratio has resulted in a disturbing lack of capacity across the board for Canadian charities. But I also worry 
about the human experience side of impact getting swept away in the metrics craze, and that anything that we cannot quite measure will be dismissed as non-consequential. Data is not the end. There is and always will be something reductionist about trying to squeeze all of reality into the data, metrics, and pivot tables. Real impact calls for a real change, first and foremost. For me, the real change is the one that changes us in the process. As a matter of fact, they're one and the same. And at the heart of real change is first seeing the illusion that we're separate from each other. It is the stories that change us by breaking that illusion. It is the stories where readers merge with the subjects. The power of stories is our shared human journey. It is stories that, by changing us first, have the potential to affect real change. And so in the data and numbers era, where we can see and measure more than ever before, let's not forget the primacy of narrative as a potent tool for change, the primacy of stories, stories already told and stories that still need to be embedded into our shared experience. Thank you.